Remember in our last episode, we had glued the four pieces that make up the second layer of our bottom here. And here it is right here. They've just been edge glued with two to one epoxy glue. You know, our little total boat sport dory here is starting to come together. We've got quite a few pieces of the boat made. This is, like I said, the second layer. The first layer has already been made and set aside. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna set this aside actually because the next thing we're gonna do is put a transom up now. This whole concept is kind of interesting actually because the bottom is being made up in layers. Like I said, I no longer have to handle this like it's four individual pieces. It's one piece, look at it. You know, you can hold it up in the air, you can flip it upside down, you can do anything you want with it, and it's gonna be glued onto the boat in the same way. That's pretty neat. Here I am back aft and I'm gonna get started working on the transom, but there's a few things I wanted to show you first here. This uh, jig here is kind of interesting because it's kind of all set up already to accept the transom. The false bottom has been cut off on this angle right here and it lines up with the same angle that this piece of wood has been cut off on right here. So the transom just lays up against it when you clamp it down. And I've clamped a piece of wood across underneath here because I need to have something like that in order for me to be able to clamp the transom against it. So you'll see how that works out when we mount the piece up there. But uh, a few other things I'd kind of like to say is that I've gotten some of the dimensions for this transom from the drawings. And, uh, you know, I don't want to take it all from the drawings. I'm more or less interested in the shape of the inside of the transom from the drawing because I don't want to go beyond that. And I'm also not going to cut it to bevel because it's too dangerous to get it anywhere near bevel and it's a progressive bevel and there's just too many numbers to know and everything. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out square and I'm going to mount it and put it in position square and I'm going to do my beveling while it's right here with an electric plane. Very simply done. It might look like there's quite a bit of wood to remove and maybe there is, but it goes real quick. The thing you have to do is be very, very careful. You don't go past where you're trying to go. So the next thing for us really to do is to show you the piece of wood right here. Now this piece of wood is just perfect for the job. This is the outside of it right here. So a lot of this is gonna get beveled right off. Now the next thing I wanna do is flip it right over and show you the inside of it. Now this is a pretty nice looking piece of wood. I would call this piece of wood edge grain, if not quarter sawn, because you can see it's kind of striped all the way across. That just means that your annual rings are going through it in this direction right here, and the medullary rays are in this direction. You know, it's a nice piece of wood because it's got resistance to splitting and all the kinds of things that I want it to have. And it's got nice stability. It won't warp or crack or do any of those things. It's been seasoned for quite some time, so. I picked a pretty nice looking piece of wood, you know, it's nice and healthy, you know, it's an inch and five sixteenths of an inch thick, like I said, it's, uh, it's plenty heavy, and uh, I'm not really trying to save a ton of weight here, really, I want it to be nice and strong, and uh, the thing about the transom is you have to have a healthy piece of wood because you're going to use the transom to fasten the planks right onto the boat, so, you know, you can't just be playing around with some light little piece of wood here, this thing's got to stay together, so... The next thing I'm going to do is take this piece of wood over to the bench and put a center line on it before I clamp it up against the boat. Now I'm going to clamp one end of my straight edge down here because I just can't hold on to it without doing it. It just makes it so much better. It's kind of slippery. Now I'm going to put my pencil line right down the center line right here. And this is going to line up with the pencil lines that I've got on the center line of the jig. So. I'm going to put it on there pretty nice and dark because I just don't want to have to darken it up later or do anything like that. I just want it on there, kind of permanent style. So I'm going over it a few times here just to get it dark and deep, like pressed right into the center of the wood, really. Now that I've got that done, I'm going to unclamp my straight edge and set that aside. And now I'm going to just carry it over and clamp it up against the boat. Now let me look at it. Yeah. 
Now I'm cutting the heel end of the transom off with a handsaw, and I'm actually using that handsaw, you know, guiding along that false bottom, on the very bottom of that, using that as a guide. So I don't have to know what the bevel is or the angle or anything else. I'm using my jig to help me out here. You may not have noticed, but as I was cutting it off with the handsaw, I was allowing the handsaw to get a little dust between it and the surface of the, of the bottom right here because it, it keeps my blade away from where I want to cut a little tiny bit. I allowed it to rise uphill a little bit like that. You know, that way I just have a little bit to dub off. The last thing in the world I would want to have happen would be to cut it off, you know, too shy. So I don't have to try to get it perfect, you know. The planer will get it perfect. Now I've got my little electric Ryobi hand planer right here and uh, I've added a little feature that I wanted to show you here. It's just like a little handle. It's a piece of drain pipe for a kitchen sink actually is what it is and it just slides over the chute like that and it allows me to hold on to it with a handle way out on one side so I can control the angle of it this way real easy and uh, you know I could do it this way as well so you'll probably see me hold on to it up here and do a few strokes and maybe a few strokes holding on to it like this but basically you know like I said I've allowed the saw to rise uphill. I've got a little bit of dubbing over in this corner over here but this side's almost perfect right here so I'm going to use this as a guide to take a little bit of material off over here now I'm finishing whittling up that cut that I made with the handsaw on the heel end of the transom right now with my electric plane. There isn't very much there left to take off with the electric plane. It's just a matter of having a little bit so it works out the way I like it. I want to have a little bit to trim off rather than have nothing to trim off. And I've got it the way I want it and now it's nice and smooth and continuous with the bottom. And the thing for me to do now is to transfer a line that was the center line on the very bottom. That whole false bottom's got a center line on it now. And I'm going to transfer that onto that heel end cut on the transom. Then I'm going to put a couple little pencil lines, one on each side to represent the width on the inside of the transom. Now I'm going to remove the transom and take it over and set it on the workbench. Now I've got a little square and a pencil and I'm going to square that center line that I've got on the inside of the transom over onto the outside of the transom. Now I'm going to connect up that line with the line that I put across the very bottom of it when it was up on the boat and that'll be the center line on the very outside. Now I have to be careful just like I did before. I'm going to clamp this piece down because otherwise when I put the line on there it's liable to slide all over the place. So let's make sure it's right where it's supposed to be. That looks right right there. Now we're going to put a center line right down the outside of it. And along that center line, I'm going to transfer some measurements from the drawings onto that center line. Once I've got those on there, I'm going to square off the center line with some lines over to one edge. Now you have to be awful careful doing this because it's a slippery surface out there, especially with one of these framing squares. So pin it down nice and tight. Be very careful about looking at it before you draw your line. Once you've got it on there, you've got a few more to go. Now I'm going to transfer some measurements that represent the width at that station on each side of the center line right there. And I'm going to use those dimensions to draw a line vertically on the side that I'm going to be able to use to bevel up against. Now I'm using an awl to transfer those dimensions because it's much easier for me to do. I can set the awl down and it doesn't slide around and then apply a little bit of pressure and get the mark exactly where I want it. With a pencil it's even more difficult than that really. So once I get that done, I'm going to draw those lines, then I'm going to flip the transom over, and I'm going to do the same thing basically on the inside. But on the inside, these lines are the lines that I'm going to take over and cut on the bandsaw right here. I'm making 90 degree cuts on the bandsaw, which is the easiest thing to do because making bevel cuts this deep wouldn't be advisable. The piece would be drifting around a little bit and it just won't work out really well. If you want to make sure you're being accurate, you cut it 90 degrees right here as slowly as you can and then transfer the piece over onto the workbench and use a block plane and just touch those cuts up a little bit with a block plane.
what I'm doing now is darkening the edge of the lumber because I want to darken that up really nice and dark so when I'm beveling this transom off I can see that pencil line because I'm going to be standing in some odd positions and I don't want to have it so that the thing is faint at all. You have to use a nice hard lead pencil and you have to bear down on a pencil line like this because I don't want there to be any intermittence in it whatsoever. I want it as dark as possible all the way from the top to the bottom on both sides. I've moved the transom over into position up against the molds and you can see the pencil lines on the after face of it. Now those are the lines that I don't want to bevel past while I'm beveling it. And you can also see the lines on the forward edge of it, very dark on the forward edge of it because I can't plane past either set of those lines. And like I said, I'm down in some funny positions holding onto the electric plane when I'm doing this kind of work and it helps if those lines are as dark as possible. I'm going to use my electric plane again here. And there's quite a bit of material to take off, but the plane removes material really rapidly depending on how you've got it adjusted. It also removes material very nice and slowly as you sneak up to the line. So you have to be very, very careful and patient. And I know there will be a tiny bit of hand planing to do when I'm done. So I'm not going to try to ultimately get it perfect with the electric plane, but the plane works great. It really works good because I've got this new handle that I've got on it which controls the angle of the plane and makes it way, way easier for me to do this type of work with it. It's getting closer. Closer. All right, now we're getting, we're almost on top of it, right there. Let me see here. I'm getting down awful close, so, uh, you know, it may sound like the plane has taken off a ton of material, but it's really not. It's just effectively cutting. I'm going to use that same batten. I'm using it to check that bevel, make sure that barren is exactly right on both sides, and now I'm able to continue. All right, let me check it again. It's going to look a lot better now. Well, there's our transom right there. It wasn't too much of an effort. We got it on there. It's not completely perfect yet. It might take a little tiny bit of a micro adjustment up in here where I'm starting to bevel it. And uh, I haven't shaped it exactly the way it's going to be at the top yet. I'm going to shape it in like this a little bit more at the top and change the whole shape of the top of it. And of course, it's a little tall. We're going to cut it round on the top and a few different things. But we're going to reserve all of that because the only place that's really important to us at this point in time is working right down in here where the garbage planks are going to contact it right in here. You know, we've put it up there just like we did the stem because we have to have it in place in order for us to go on and do any planking. So that's what we've been trying to do is to get these pieces that we need to do. There's an order to it and uh, we're going to do it in order just the way it has to be done. So we've got the transom made at this point in time 
And the next thing for us to do is to get involved with the framing. Now the framing, like I said, is kind of special. It's special to me. I can't wait to get involved with it. Here it is right here. It's ultra high molecular weight UHMW. And uh, that's how it's referred to when you go to buy it. And uh, the stuff is fantastic. It's really, really different. It's very much like working with wood, but not quite the same. You use the same mechanical fastenings and different things like that. But uh, you know, it, it, the, 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 the thing about it is, is you can bend it and not be breaking it and wasting it. So, you know, it's ultra strong, even though it's flexible, and I can't wait to get involved with it myself. So there won't be any hold up in videos, I can tell you that for sure. I'm ready to go, and it's ready to go, so let's get to it. 